Hi, my name is Robert Hansen, and I will be doing another reading of my writing. Running for fitness, I am not. The system I knocked down, and an explanation of my experiences with complex dissociative disorder. To run for fitness, this is what one does to stay fit. How about running for one's sanity? I run for a little more than eight miles over the course of an hour on a treadmill. You may have already heard about my garbage psychology. They are a set of child personalities with God complexes. They make my life very difficult. They used to make it an utter hell. I used to want to die in a ditch. I was so miserable. Apparently, my garbage psychology thought that was too good for me. I have now found a nifty tool with which to fight them. It is the run. I, the main personality, learned this lesson a year ago. That which is unnecessary will simply go away as the challenge goes up, because it has to. What does this mean? In this context, being someone with dissociative disorder, it means the functions associated with the garbage personalities and the disorder will go away as the challenge goes up, because it has to. My garbage personalities are unnecessary. This disorder is unnecessary. Interestingly enough, this is exactly what has been happening over the previous two years, but more specifically over the last year. As I run, they grow weaker and weaker. I become stronger and stronger. They don't like this. They hate this, in fact. Well, the feeling is mutual. I hate them. Hence, the need for this and even more videos. They do more than just irritate me. They infuriate me. So I run as though my life depends on it. Because in many ways, it does. At least the quality of my life. This is why I run. So what has the running been doing for me? I repeated this and I wholeheartedly believe it because I am living it. That which is unnecessary will simply go away as the challenge goes up because it has to. This is what has been happening. Before, there were dozens of functions which all acted in combination and harmony with each other as a system. The architects of this system referred to it as the system. I call it the shitbag game. Here is how it worked. The architects, the actual thinkers of the game, could largely determine which personalities would occupy the conscious mind. This gave them several advantages. First off, I believe it was their original intent to control the main personality by burying him with other, with other minor personalities, meaning forcing the main personality from the conscious mind by pushing naive and gullible personalities into the conscious mind. What does this allow my garbage psychology to do? Or more specifically, what does it allow the architects of this system to do? The architects used this system to conduct empty fantasies and combat operations. Their system was made up of many parts, all working in combination with each other. First, there are the writers who think up exactly how the fantasy or operation would work. Second, there are the managers who would carry everything out by implementing the orders from the architects. The highest managers would meet and discuss how they would implement everything beforehand. Then it would finally trickle down to the players. The players were responsible for a function. These functions could be as simple as an itch, a toothache, forced movements, forgetfulness, an audio hallucination, a visual hallucination, or something else. These parts all required many personalities to operate it. When the system was up and running, it offered the architects of the system absolute control over the vehicle. The vehicle is the name I have given the body which enabled them to carry out their empty fantasies or combat operations. 
What did these fantasies or combat operations look like? One fantasy had to do with me, or us, as a prophet and the architects acting as God. One combat operation had the vehicle enter a room, sit down, and the architects could quickly anger those who occupied the conscious mind. Afterwards, the vehicle would walk alongside the same fence, back and forth, and forth and back for hours, repeating phrases. At the same time, some kind of war would be playing out in the vehicle's imagination. The thoughts were so vivid, so as to create realism, and thus occupy the attention of whoever occupied the conscious mind. This went on for months, until enough of the important personalities figured out it was all fake. So how does the run play into all of this? Back in July of 2018, I began running. But more importantly, a month before that, I began walking. I began walking a lot, in fact. I began walking anywhere from 15 to 35 miles a day. I mentioned the system. I am convinced that it was this walking, this marathon walking, which took down the system. So instead of empty fantasies and combat operations, circumstances have changed from many parts working in harmony together to devolving into the broken parts of this system pestering me, and more specifically us, the other personalities, non-stop. The running of eight miles over the course of an hour has greatly weakened this system. I believe the run to be about the most powerful tool I have in my arsenal. Due to the run, I actually have good days now, before I did not. I can actually take a vacation now, before I could not. I can actually have a day off now, before I could not. I can actually watch a movie without my garbage psychology interrupting me or without them screwing the movie up before I could not. I can play and enjoy video games now before I could not. I can now enjoy solitude, peace and quiet and seclusion before I could not. All of this I greatly attribute to the run. This is without mentioning the health benefits. I have lost nearly 60 pounds and have kept it off. I have not weighed 180 since my early 20s. All of this is due to my aggressive running. Thank you for listening. If you like this video, please like, share, or subscribe.